While Xylotar may have the most ridiculous theme we've ever heard, it's one of the best modern trick-taking games we've played, one that innovates by not letting you look at your own cards. Xylotar was designed by Christopher Ray and is coming soon from Bezier Games, who we have to thank for hooking us up with an early review copy. It's a two to five player, rather unique trick-taking game that plays in well under an hour. Once upon a time, there was a polar bear with a Xylotar. And due to the events described in one very bizarre backstory, you are now trying to reassemble this wonky instrument by bidding for tricks. In Xylotar, you play three hands of trick-taking where you will be bidding for tricks, but don't even get to look at your own cards. So you are going to be able to figure out their approximate value. The player with the highest score has found the perfect balance of 80s synthesizer rock and modern karimba melodies and is now ready to bring the Xylotar to the mass market. Xylotar comes in a small bo card box and features 65 thinner-than-usual cards that come in eight different colored suits. Each suit features cards numbered 0 to something with the lowest suit being pink with 0 to 4 and the highest being red 0 to 11. Each suit also has an associated note with it to help tell them apart. There's also a set of very clear instructions and five high note cards. When playing with two, four, and five players, you use all of the cards. When you play with three, you remove two suits, and there's a set of variant rules for when you play with two. So you start a game of Xylotar by dealing out the cards evenly between all the players, who then sort the cards they were dealt from highest to lowest, sorry, lowest to highest. They then place a high note card on the back of the stack and pass it to the next player. Yes, in this game, you get to look at one of your opponent's cards, all of them, their entire hand. Each player takes the stack they were given and lays them out left to right with the high note card going to the far left and each subsequent card placed beside the last. Note, no one gets to look at the cards they've been handed, but can approximate their values based on where they are placed and what suits they are dealt. To help with this, each card back lists the possible number range of the card on the back. The player to the left of the dealer starts the hand by playing any card but their highest, which would be the one next to the high note card, and then everyone plays a card onto the trick with standard trick-taking rules applying. You have to follow suit if you can, and if you can't follow, you can play off suit. The highest card wins the trick unless the trump suit which is red unless you're playing with less players and it moves, is the highest red card plays wins the trick. The winner of the trick gets the next lead, and the hand ends when everyone has played all their cards. Now, to make things interesting, if not seeing your own cards wasn't enough, at some point during each hand, players have to make a bid for how many tricks they'll take. But they don't get to just pick any number. To do this, they play a card, and then they pick two cards in their current tableau that are adjacent to each other and look at them. One goes back, the other becomes your bid. This is the only chance you get in the game to look at your own cards. At the end of each hand, players get one point per trick and then get five bonus points for hitting their bid. There's no penalty for missing it. You then play two more rounds with a lead given to the player with the least points in round two and three. At the end of three rounds, the player with the most points wins. When you're playing Xylotar with three players, you take out the red and orange cards and yellow becomes Trump. For a two-player game, you set up two ghost players with the human players organizing the cards to their opponent and the ghost hand to their left. Your bids are set at the start of the hand by your center card. The ghost players always play their cards low to high based on suit, and if either hit their bid, neither player scores points for tricks. If both goats, ghosts hit their bid, the humans don't even get points for hitting theirs. So we discovered this game at the Gamma trade show where it couldn't be missed. That is because someone, someone brilliant at Bezier Games actually made a Xylotar, uh, one large enough for a polar bear to play. They had a true to scale, technically playable instrument there, one with lots of LED lights. Uh, the Bezier rep, Jay Bernardo, could often be found posing and walking around the floor with it. Yeah, it was massive. I really should have grabbed a photo of the Xylotar. It was magnificent. Now, this giant Xylotar and this silliness did nothing to prepare me for the most ridiculous theme in board gaming. A polar bear went to a concert in the 80s, which made them want a guitar, but they couldn't play one. So they worked with a local craftsman to invent the Xylotar. But then the craftsman went missing and the authorities think the polar bear ate him. So the bear is now hiding in northern Canada under the northern lights. Come on. 
It's totally ridiculous and honestly has very little to do with the game. It is easily the single most silly card game backstory I've ever heard. It's like someone let their five-year-old go wild and write the story. Now, while ridiculous, it's also not easily forgettable. And the fact that we're here talking about the game tonight only reinforces that. So ignoring the silly theme, what you're left with is a very cool and interesting, and I would say innovative trick taker. Now, all of us here have played a lot of trick taking games, including a growing number of modern hobby trick takers. Reviews all over the blog of those and our YouTube channel. Each is trying to do their own thing, right? But this is nothing quite like anything else. This one's very unique. Now, of course, the big thing here is the hidden information. Now, one thing I'm not sure if it was clear from the overview of play is just how much information you do have. No, you can't look at your hand, but this isn't Hanabi, where you're going in completely blind. You can get a lot of information from just how your cards lay out. This is especially true if you have a suit without many numbers in it high up on your track. Like if you've got a dark blue in spot eight, you know every card in your row from one to seven has to be a five or less. Yeah, you can make a lot of educated guesses based on how the cards are laid out. And as the game progresses, it becomes easier and easier to guess which cards you have. And also, you do get to peek at two of them when you place your bid. Honestly, for how light a game this feels like it should be, there's a lot more to it for card counters and players who really want to figure out the card distributions based on what cards you gave other players, what's showing in front of you and in front of everyone else, and so on. Yeah, and the key part there is the front of everyone else. There is a ton of information you can gain just by looking at other people's tableaus. Again, every cards are laid out on the table. They're, they're, no one's holding a hand. So honestly, looking at what your opponents have can be as important or even more important than looking at your own. This gives a real puzzle feel to Xylotar. I don't remember experiencing any other trick taker that felt like I was trying to solve a puzzle like this. Yeah, that's true. I I am not a card counter, and this game makes me want to count cards. You look at all the cards that folks have laid out on the table and paying attention to what they pull when they bid. And someone in the chat room was asking, do you get to see those cards? Well, what happens is you pull two and you will place one down face up in front of you as your bid and you'll put the other one back and they won't see. But you will have seen that. And you're trying to remember what cards you just handed over to the player to your left and all of that plays into trying to figure out what cards you have sitting in front of you and what you should bid. I have to admit, uh, especially after hearing the introduction to this game and the theme to the game, I was expecting a silly, frivolous trick taker based on uh, just based on that theming. But that is not what this is. In fact, it might even be heavier than what I want, especially when you consider the expectations the game sets with that silly theme. Now, another thing I want to call about the game is that bidding system. I think it's actually brilliant. Uh, the fact that you have to decide when to bid, and it's after you play, which is also important, and the fact bidding gives you a sneak peek at two of your cards is huge. And it's all part of solving that puzzle. Like, do you bid early so you know how hard you should be fighting for tricks or how much you want to give away to other players? Or do you wait and play off the cards you know the values of, the ones that are blatantly obvious, and then use your bid to get that little extra piece of information mid-game that'll help you play out the rest of your hand? Plus, I like the way the scoring works because you get points for every trick. So even when you don't hit your bid, you're still scoring points, and there's no penalty for bidding too high or too low. Yeah, only getting two points for taking two tricks isn't so bad if it comes with a five-point you-got-your-bid bonus. Yeah, the bidding, the bidding thing is really interesting and really kind of twists this game uh, a lot more than you, you would think it might. Now, I did find the card design a little odd, but I did grow to like it. It's it's not the most striking, and things are different sizes and that. The the sizes of the, the thin cards is nice. I do appreciate that. Um, They're actually not bad to shuffle at all. I actually find them easier to riffle shuffle than a normal deck. Uh, the size of the notes, though, and the colors that follow your usual rainbow order, you know, your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, and even the note shapes all have actually helped me see the information I need to see at the table, which is really important for this one because you need to see the other players' tableaus. That open information is a big part of this game. And honestly, having real notes didn't matter to me at all. It doesn't matter that I have no idea what a sharp half note looks like. But I guess that's what the symbol is on those green cards. Yeah, I liked the card size right where it was. It, it or, the game already takes up a surprising amount of space. And if the cards were any larger, it would be problematic. 
I would say maybe they could have made them a twitch smaller, but then I would probably hate shuffling them. Now, another thing I appreciate in Xylotar is the fact it's only three rounds. Most traditional card games and many modern tribe games fall into what I would call as a trap of making it so every player has to deal once. You play until everyone's the dealer once and the player to their left starts around. That's so typical of card games. But that rule can make some fast playing card games into long, almost epic game nights. They can be too long. And I'm pretty sure that's what would happen here. Well, I'm sure there's some card sharks out there that are frustrated because not every player gets to be dealer or they don't always get the lead. Uh, maybe that leads to a lack of balance. But I like the fact that this game, to me, feels like it ends right when it's most interesting. Like, I've just had three rounds. I've had enough. Let's see who won. I think, and for me, the three rounds is sort of a saving grace for me. And it prevents that game from overstaying its welcome. While it's fun, it's more of a card counter's puzzle than I personally enjoy. But... That quick three-round format means you can enjoy the fun. I might not ask to play this, but I'm certainly not going to turn it down because I know it's not going to take up my whole night. I'm actually really loving this game, but I agree. Three rounds feels like just the perfect length. Now, there is one problem with Xylotar, and Deanna kind of hinted at this earlier that I think has to be brought up, and that is how much space it takes up. Uh, due to the fact you are using the entire deck every game, that's a lot of cards to be displayed on the table at once. Um... Eight is your middle card, so I think it's like 16 each if you're playing two players. Um, now, they did use thinner cards, but a full hand takes up a lot of room per player. At a regular rectangular table with two players per side, we've actually had to have players offset their cards so that at one point you're kind of overlapping and one player's cards are in front of another player's cards. Yeah, unfortunately, you really need to see the cards, both of uh, your, your own and others' tableaus. So there are limits to how much you can condense things. Uh, and the, of course, the, cor the card order does matter a lot. Overall, I was taken by my first play of Xylotar, and I haven't looked back. I really dig the way this game plays. I like the way it makes me think. I love that feeling of accomplishment when I'm able to hit my bid. And I enjoy being surprised when I play a card, expecting to have one value and it being way off. Especially when you grab something way to the right and it's like a two. I dig the challenge of seeing a pink card come up by my high note card and trying to figure out how I can get any points. And that feeling of joy when I could take five tricks in a row by the end of the round, much to my opponent's surprise. I also enjoy being outplayed and that feeling of hoping someone doesn't steal a trick I need. Like, oh, they have the last trump. They don't need to take it, but maybe they will and screw me over. And that, that feeling of anticipation. Honestly, it's everything I love in a good trick taking game. Yeah, this one really scratches that itch for me. I love the way it makes me think. I like how easy it is to teach, though the way you stack the cards to hand them off can feel confusing to folks at first. They, they tend to pick it up pretty quickly. I actually think this is currently my favorite trick taker. Nice. I'm really digging it. I honestly think this game is not being served well by its silly theme. This is a solid puzzle of a trick taker that will certainly engage people who love this sort of game. But in order to do so, they need to kind of get past the silliness that it really kind of throws at you up front, both on the box and in the rules. OK, point taken. But I'm just going to ignore the theme. It, <laughs> it didn't turn me off from the game. It's just neutral. It's gone. It never existed. There's a polar bear on the front of the box. I don't know. Maybe this is the one case where, where everyone tends to uh, get mad at Mo for not explaining the theme of the game before we start playing. Maybe I should start skipping it. And even though it's amusing and it sticks in people's heads, I should just be saying, hey, you want to play a trick taking game where you don't get to look at your own cards? Maybe that's the better way to sell it. I don't. I think if you dig trick taking games, um, especially bidding games, right? It's things like spades going back to traditional games where you're bidding for how many tricks you're going to take. I think you're going to love Xylotar as long as you got a table big enough to actually fit it. So I, for me, I'm not sure it's as much of a blanket buy for trick taking lovers as Mo thinks, but I definitely think it's worth a play to decide. I do think that it's a style of trick taker that may not be for everyone as it's got that puzzle aspect to it. Yeah, I actually think that's what I love is that puzzle aspect. It's a trick taker where you can see what suits everyone has in play and you can make an educated guess as to whether each card is high or low. And that makes for a pretty unique game versus your classic trick taker. OK, so looking at that way, I would say if you enjoy board games that present puzzles to be solved, I think this may be a trick taking card game you would enjoy. Despite being a game where you can't even see your own cards, you are presented with a lot of information that lets you make those logical decisions. Now, as for everyone else, give this game a shot if you can. Honestly, at under 15 bucks, 
this could be worth taking a chance on. Just buy it, see if your group likes it, or maybe see if your local game store can do a demo night or try it at a local public play event. Honestly, if anyone here in Windsor wants to give it a shot, just let me know. I'll bring it out to one of our events. Well, that's all we have to say about Xylotar. Now that you know what that haunting synth karimba music that you sometimes hear when the northern lights are most bright is, it's time for you to tell us what game you've played that you think has the most ridiculous theme ever. Leave a comment wherever you found this review, or better yet, let us know on the Tabletop Bellhop Discord at discord.tabletopbellhop.com. Now, if you want to hear us talk about more oddly themed games like Xylotar, you can help keep the show going and keep us talking games by supporting us through Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. As thanks, you'll get access to things like first thoughts reviews, our show notes, some behind the scenes blog posts, bonus audio, and more. 